Okay, so uh, this is the troubleshooting part of the receiver. Um, lots of great suggestions coming in as to as to what I can uh, what I can do to change. So, what I thought I'd first do, and, and let me just zoom in a little bit, is uh, is basically I had the I was probing the audio up here before underneath this board. Uh, so I've moved that before the audio switch here, just to see if that makes any difference. And uh, oops, excuse me, and. Uh, as if I pan up, you can see there's absolutely no change there. So probing before the audio switch, I've still got that uh, strong signal. So anyway, uh, troubleshooting to continue. So just a quick update. Uh, I replaced the um, FST3253 with a different one just to see if that would uh, improve the situation. And uh, unfortunately... Let me pan up here. You can see it. Uh, it does not. Um, so this is basically I'm tuned uh, 8.5 kilohertz above the uh, the input RF, and I'm still getting that uh, the, those weird audio harmonics. Anyway, I'll keep searching. So just discovered uh, something interesting. Uh, even if I have no RF input at all, um, I'm getting this. Um, I'm getting this strange output. So no RF coming in at all, and uh, when I'm tuned to 14.210, uh, that's the local oscillator, I'm getting this, uh, this strange uh, audio output. Very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure where it leads me there, so I'm going to keep searching. Okay, so quick update on where I am. And... Uh, it's turning out this problem has nothing to do with input RF. So there's obviously some sort of audio oscillations that are going on in the circuit. Um, and I had a few suggestions on, um, you know, making sure that I had uh, plenty of these little uh, decoupling caps uh, here, there, and everywhere. I had quite a few, but I'd uh, unpopular. Quite a few of these were unpopulated. So I went ahead and populated them. Uh, so there's a couple on the back there, there's a, there's a few on the front here. The situation's a bit better, um, but really not, uh, still not great. So um, there's a few more um, uh, caps that I've still uh, got to populate. There's one here that's on the uh, uh, the half half rail supply here for the uh, for the uh, transmitter combiner uh, that I'll put in. And I might uh, go around and, and do as was suggested and probably decorate um, decorate uh, the remainder of the circuit with a few more of these decoupling caps. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm getting this uh, sort of oscillation noise through. This is the um, half rail supply for the, sp for the uh, splitter here. So I think I'm getting, uh, I'm getting noise on this 5 volt line here. So anyway... Um, I'll uh, put a few more uh, decoupling caps on here and uh, then we'll come back and have a look at the signal. Just a few more things that I did um, that I did try. I, I did replace this uh, FST3253 that didn't have any effect at all. I replaced these with two 20 nanofarad uh, capacitors here. I replaced them with 470 nanofarad capacitors. It provides a little... Um, uh, it, uh, this is basically acts as a low pass filter, so it brings the frequency back. Um, didn't really have much of an effect though. Um, what else have I tried here? Yeah, I removed the uh, the band pass filter here and injected the RF signal directly at the splitter. That didn't improve things at all. And you know, shortly after that, I kind of came to the conclusion that the input RF had nothing to do with it. Um, and in fact, uh, as we see the signal, you'll see it's, uh, there's these repeating peaks of, uh, of noise as we go through it. But anyway, uh, let's just have a look at uh, where we are with the signals now. Okay, so as you can see, I'm at uh, uh, local oscillator frequency 14.28.5, although there's no RF input at all, so this, all this noise is being generated internally. So just panning up to the, uh, the noise that's being output, so I'm, I'm actually probing the output. Um, so the capacitor, the various decoupling capacitors that I've installed on the circuit have improved the situation somewhat. If you recall back at uh, before, uh, this was around about 680-ish millivolts peak to peak, and uh, now it's down to uh, 250, 
millivolts peak to peak. So the situation's improved a little bit, um, but obviously uh, not enough to uh, uh, to get this on the air yet. Uh, if you actually put this noise through a speaker, it uh, it sounds dreadful. So. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, looking around the circuit to see uh, if there are other opportunities to put decoupling caps on there. Um, and uh, you know, we'll come back and uh, see what the effect of that is. Okay, so it's uh, starting to look a bit like a rat's nest, unfortunately. But uh, as you can see, I've got the output of the tailor detector, which is here and here, going straight to the input of the uh, ESP32A1S uh, here and here. And you can just about make it out, but I've cut the lines here and here, and uh, you can't quite see it, but here and here, and that goes off to the audio switch. So the audio switch is completely out of the circuit here, so it's just going straight from the Taylor detector uh, straight to the ESP32, and then as you'll see, I'll be probing on this output here, and we'll have a look at the result. Okay, so here's the uh, output here, and as you can see, the uh, situation hasn't changed at all. So uh, uh, what that confirms, and let's just move down. At least what that confirms is that the, um, the audio switch doesn't really have anything to do with the problem. Um, so obviously, we know that this is the source of the, uh, of the noise. Uh, just don't know at this stage how it's getting into the audio circuit. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this has a close proximity to some of the audio circuitry, so uh, that could be it. Uh, it could also be uh, this header here. I've, I've always been a little bit suspicious about this. This is a homegrown board, and as I mentioned, I do have some proper boards coming from JLC PCB, so, and I will try them when they arrive, but I'm not sure quite sure when that's going to be it might be in a week or so's time so it kind of leaves me thinking well what what, what can I do right now and uh, I'm gonna to have to have a bit of a think about that because um, I could try and mount this directly to the board as you can see it's a uh, it's actually on a there's a header here that that it's on so I could try mounting that directly to the board probably be best to switch it off before I do that um, let me just pull that out so you can see it. So as you can see, that's mounted to headers. And, and if you have a look here, you, let me just sort of close up on this. You can see some of the traces here are quite, uh, quite spindly. And I'm wondering if there's some high impedance pathways uh, between the, you know, the input, audio input and audio output here. Um, and this isn't the greatest ground in the world either. So... My suspicions are sort of coming back to uh, to this board now. One of the things I could do is remove these uh, headers and solder this directly to the board, but unfortunately, these caps are in the way, so I'm not sure I could do that easily. I could pull the caps off uh, and, and uh, maybe solder some some other caps there, but then that's starting to change too much. Uh, Anyway, so I'm going to have to have a bit of a think about this. Uh, it's an interesting problem. Um, we'll see. So uh, these little uh, adapter boards arrived from uh, JLC PCB uh, the other day. So I thought, great, I'll, I'll get it on the board. And uh, I'm sure this is what the problem is. Unfortunately, it, it wasn't at all. Um, and in fact, there's really no change at all. Uh, with this adapter board on than the uh, the kind of the homegrown one. So I'm kind of a little stumped at, uh, at this point and what I might do is uh, kind of wrap this, uh, this this video series for the moment and uh, go out and have a bit of a think about uh, about what's causing this noise here. Um, I've uh, you know I've been playing around obviously with the ESP32 A1S for some time now. Uh, it might be time for a bit of a change from that perhaps uh, um, you know perhaps some just use an ESP32 with a uh, um, with a, a, a specialized ES8388 board that uh, I like I've used before with the PCB Arsis. I seem to get a lot better results on this I, I just think that um, it's got to be something to do with the way I'm mounting this 
uh, and perhaps the proximity to SI5351. I just haven't been able to track down uh, what's causing the noise. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, even though uh, we didn't get to a success. I'm going to obviously continue playing around with this, but I didn't want to uh, uh, sort of hold off doing the video for uh, as I play around. Um, this uh, this sort of stuff takes uh, takes a while to troubleshoot. So anyway, hope hope you enjoyed this. Um, uh, I, I will be uh, um, in some subsequent videos. Um, doing a bit of playing around. Uh, there's a, another audio codec called the PCM3060, which uh, I'm kind of intrigued by. I've seen it used in a uh, radio called the Magnus um, uh, with pretty good results. So uh, might have a bit of a play around with that. But uh, anyway, that's all for now. Hope you enjoyed this.